so beautiful today and uh, winter is almost on us and um, so put, put up put up the first verse there for me today my sermon is called arm yourselves um, arm yourselves or arm yourself something like that um, and I'm not going to read out of the old King James Version I'm going to read out of the new King James Version if you guys don't mind he say here, therefore since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Whoa! Isn't that interesting? That he who, excuse me, he says, for he who suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh for the lust of men or the desires of men, but for the will of God okay before you fall apart here we are a grace church how many of you agree with me on that yeah. um, that means God got absolutely nothing against you yes. thank you for enthusiasm you may sit down now you've been forgiven for eternity amen I want to explain that verse for you because uh, and I'm, I'm going to come back to this verse I first want to work through other things but the outstanding thing in this verse it says that arm yourself with the same mind you know it's amazing if a country can still have their weapons if people private people can have weapons how many of you agree with me on that if you don't have a gun go buy a gun <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will come back to this gun thing. Are you with me? All right. So, Psalm 46. Let's begin in Psalm 46 because we are going to talk about you arm your mind today. And this is not your normal grace message that you're going to hear. It's going to be a little bit different. And um, there's certain things that I want to say to you here today. He says, be still and know that I am God. Say no. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. But that word be still in the original Greek excuse me in Hebrew literally mean let go yeah. that verse it literally means let go and know that I am God wow man that, that changes everything are you with me <laughs> so here, here here's what I was just meditating on this week and I was waiting on the father and um, the, the things that that, that that come up in my heart I at this stage of my life normally come in on a Sunday and I basically tell her what the Holy Spirit say I spend time with the Lord and I say Lord I want to come in and I just want to say to this congregation to this people that's together what is on your heart and normally God touch people in their heart with what he tried to say one of the things that I want to major on here in the beginning say to the person next to you it's first going to be bad news then it's going to be good news amen <laughs> the gospel is always good news but but what I want to major on here this morning is that we repent repentance work in two ways and rep the word repent is metanoia in the Greek which means to think different to change your mind to think new completely what you have think you you thought before Jesus say in uh, uh, Mark 1 verse 15 Jesus say that the, uh, the time is fulfilled the kingdom of heaven is is at hand repent and believe the good news of the kingdom so there is a change of thinking that is there's a shift that is taking place in our thinking and that means we repent now and repentance is always there is two kinds of repentance there's re repentance from and there is repentance towards so we repent from old thinking are you with me and we repent toward new thinking Amen. Because you are now a new creation. You have been created in the image of God. You have been joined to God. You are being born from above. You are absolutely part of the kingdom of God. Amen. You are joined right now to the kingdom of God. I'm joined to the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if I heal you or I touch you, then the kingdom of heaven has come near. Amen. So that means if I, you touch me, the kingdom touches me. 
In the old covenant, if you have sin in your life, if you have a, a, a woman with issue of blood or you are defiled and you touch a person, then it means that person is defiled. Under the new covenant, this completely different. That laws have changed. If I touch you, it's righteousness that touch you. Yes. Are you with me? Because we have the righteousness of Jesus. So we are, we, let, we are letting go. We let go of wrong thinking. And what I was meditating, not meditating on, what the Holy Spirit were, were, were putting on my heart is there some of us sitting here this morning and you still harbor in your heart past failures, past hurts, past disappointments. Thank you for enthusiasm. <laughs> That's one we are not enthusiastic about. So, so even uh, we 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 ha we ha we came through stuff in the past. Uh, I can tell you what uh, experience that I had. I grew up. I don't think my mom and dad were poor, but. Um, uh, my dad, my mom, my dad worked in the mine, uh, and, and uh, I was born late. I was born at the age of uh, uh, when my dad was 50, and then at 60 he retired. My sisters had the best part of life. <laughs> they could go to university. They could go to college. Um, when when I uh, then my dad retired when I was 10 years of age, and suddenly everything changed. When they were living in, working at the mine, he was doing very well financially. When he, res he, he retired, suddenly everything changed it changed to the fact that we now turn the the, the, the ketchup bottles upside down and the chutney bottles upside down. you guys with me now everything changes and I, I I cannot just get what I want and I grew up in that in that period of about eight years when when I finished grade 12 my dad said to me there's no money for you to go to college here's the reality you already have a job I wanted to get you out here in um, 24 hours but I will give you seven days <laughs> <laughs> and seven days later, I started working in the correctional services. I love my dad and my mom. Don't, don't worry. It's just, it's just stuff that we went through. You, you have respect for them. But that have placed in my heart a poverty mentality. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And, and I struck, me and my dad never had a good relationship. Um, he came to Jesus later on in his life. I'm very disappointed that I couldn't share that with him because he came to Jesus and shortly after that, he died when I was at the age of 23. But many years later, many, many years later, I'm on my way on a, on a Wednesday morning to, to speak at a women's conference, a ladies' conference in South Africa. And I had my sermon prepared. I'm on my way to this conference. And now I'm talking to Jesus while I'm driving. It's about 40, 50 miles that I have to drive. And now I'm talking to Jesus. And the next moment, my father's face come up in front of me. And I say, and the Holy Spirit said to me, you know what's your problem? You can talk to Jesus, but you cannot talk to the Father. Why is that? And I said, this is not good. And suddenly I realized I cannot communicate with the Father because I identify my earthly father with my heavenly father. And suddenly I realized what I run short in money from time to time. When I wasn't saved... I had no problem of money. Now I'm ministry, suddenly there's money problems. <laughs> I don't know why. So anyway, the Holy Spirit took me through that and I forgive my dad. And I release him. And I repented from that thought that was placed in my heart and I repented towards my real father. My father in heaven. And the whole picture of who my father is changed right in front of me. And I begin to see this man laughing and laughing and laughing. And I was crying and crying and crying. And it's like I, was, I met my father, my real father. Can I tell you something? Your real father is in heaven. You've been born from there. You have an earthly father which we respect. But right now you have a heavenly father that wants to give you everything you need. Yeah. They want to hold nothing. They want to, don't want to hold anything away back from you. Sorry, my words slip here. I walk into that ladies meeting that morning and I say everything changed. I had a sermon, but I want to tell you what happened to me. And I share my testimony and God, there was a huge breakthrough that morning among that people. I just want to say to you.
to you this morning here. You may be sit here and you come out of a background of struggling with finances, struggling with sickness, struggling with things. You you have came you came out for prayer uh, many times and you have talked to God many times about the sickness and you have listened to all sermons concerning sickness and the sickness and, and the healing did not realize and now you have lost kind of hope in that area. It have creeped into your heart. Okay? I'm not saying it's you. Maybe here is someone who sat with that, struggle with that. Then you need a fresh revelation. You need to repent from whatever is going on in your heart. It's very silent in this Episcopalian church this morning. But you have to repent from that. Repent towards what the truth say about you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let go and know that I am God. Say no. That means you let go and you know now your knowing, your thinking changed towards your Father who loves you unconditionally. Amen. Who have provided everything for you through Jesus Christ. You may be sit here today with disappointment, maybe with bitterness. The word forgive in the Greek, how many of you have seen that, that guy, that preacher on, on YouTube that talk about the new F word in the church is forgive. Have you seen that video? <laughs> it's very good. You will laugh and laugh and laugh like you never laugh. He says the new F word <laughs> in the church is forgive. So say to your friend next to you, F you. <laughs> so far, it's thousands of people in that church, he went so far, he said call your ex on the phone and say to him, I'm in church today, F you <laughs> <laughs> the new word for forgive or for F in the church <laughs> is forgive, it was really funny but the word F the, no, excuse, the word excuse me, the word forgive literally means to be divorced from something wow. It literally means God divorce you. When you are forgiven of sins, you've been divorced from sin and you have been married to Jesus' righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you, that's why this morning, if you repent from something, you are divorced. You basically get divorced. If you forgive someone, you divorce yourself from bitterness. You divorce yourself from that hurt. Are you guys with me? That's what really happened. Forgive. Sometimes people struggle to forgive because the hurt is so deep and the situation that they went through is so hard that they need the grace of Jesus to help them. Yeah. Are you with me? And you can because you have all the grace in this world. There was, uh, I remember many years ago, <laughs> many years ago, um, uh, I had uh, my, me and my board members run into some crisis in South Africa. I would, it's the first church that I planted and I was young dumb stupid <laughs> didn't know how to run a church really run into conflict with my board members so uh, and we just it was just a conflict situation that was not good and one day I was in the barn praying and I pray and the Lord said to me Peter you got unforgiveness in your heart you got to let go of that guys if you, if you want peace back in the church you got to forgive them and that was so hard. So now I'm praying, now I'm on my knees, and I say, okay, Father, give me the grace to forgive them. So I begin to pray, and I forgive them, and I go through the whole thing and just release them. And next moment, the Father say to me, okay, now I think it's important that you bless them. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I have just forgive them? I must bless him too now. <laughs> he says, yes, that's part of the package. Just bless them now. Come on. <laughs> And I begin to just bless them. You know what? God turned that thing. They, they change. But it's not really, it was my heart that first had to change. And we came into unity. The gospel, the new, the, this, this, this new covenant that we are in is a covenant that is written on the heart. Paul said we are not, that this covenant is not from the letter that we read, write on the heart. This is the spirit, is written by the spirit of God on the heart. Therefore your heart is so important. You cannot live above the condition 
condition of your heart. You cannot. Amen. For forgiveness is for you. It's not for the other people. It's for you. It sets you free. Amen. And we forgive. You know, there's another thing I want to say to you. You have to forgive yourself for your past failures and the things that you've done wrong. For some people say, yes, thank you, Jesus, you've forgiven, you forgiven me. And then situations pop up that is similar to what happened in the past and you are back into negative, condemning, guilty mode. Are you with me? Yeah. So forgive yourself. Go on. Here's a statement that I want to say to you is make this morning that you can write down. This will be probably the most important theological statement you will ever get from me okay. your past do not need you your future need you you guys with me your past don't need you your future need you that's very profound yes. huh I didn't pick that up I read it in the book <laughs> but your 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 past do not need you it's over it's gone it's done you are, this is a new day. Hallelujah. Say, this is a new day. Yes. This is a new day. Let go. Yes. So we first talk about these things. Let go. Say, let go. Yes. And know that your father loves you unconditionally. We need to let go of the bitterness of the past, the disappointments, the failures. If you sit here this morning and you struggle, you know what? The Bible say that Jesus said, I will give you the Holy Spirit as a helper. He's actually the spirit of grace. Amen? Yep. To help you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse because this is a very important verse. In 1 Peter 5, verse 5 to 9, he says, I'm reading it out of the New King James Version. He say here, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. You know what? I can read that verse and it almost sounds like God is like, okay, he's just resisting the pride, the proud. Can I tell you something? If you have pride in your heart, God has no access. Are you with me? If we have pride... We don't want to let go. We don't want to say, okay, Father, there's another way and it's your way and it's a better way and we don't want to do it and we have pride and we resist the word of God. Guess what? God has no access. Yeah, right. Amen? But He gives grace to the humble. Say humble. humble. See, grace people need to know that there is a thing called humility. <laughs> Amen. Is that we, we, are, we, we humble ourselves to His word. We humble ourselves to His lordship. Why? Because He got a better way for us. He got the plan. He got the outcome. He got it all. That's why we submit unto Him. Right. Amen? Amen. Humble yourself. I think uh, James said, humble yourself. Uh, 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 I'm not going to go into James. James basically used the same passages. But here he's saying, verse 6, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Come on. Yes. You're going to be exalted. So let go of the pride. Let go of the bitterness. Let go of the failures of the past. Forgive people. That's the right way. Amen. Then God will exalt you in the right time. At due time. Amen. You maybe go through a situation now. But there is a due time. There is a moment where everything changes. How many of you have, have, have walked with God for a while. And there are certain things you trust God with. And then one day suddenly. Say suddenly. Bang. It just happened. How did it happen? It is the Father. It is the due time. It is the specific moment. That that thing come to fulfillment. Amen. Then he say casting all your care upon him for he cares for you yes. it doesn't matter how big how small it is cast it upon him he cares for you yes. maybe you have a plan in your mind to how you're gonna direct things in the future and then <laughs> and then you can't get there because you don't really submit to God because his plan is different than what you think so we need to submit sometimes and say okay father I had a plan this thing is not working but I submit to you show me your plan I remember in Newfoundland I ministered at the church and there was a German a man from Germany and I pray for him for the baptism in the Holy Spirit and he was filled with the Holy Spirit was speaking in tongues and about a week later he came back to the church and he called me to the side he says I want to tell you something something amazing happened 
He says, I'm an engineer. My prayers were never answered. Never ever. He says, because in my prayer life, I work it out of my mind how God has to follow the procedure and then I tell him how he must do it. Because according to my, according to my engineering mind, that's the way it needs to go. I can't work it different. He says, but now I'm speaking in tongues and suddenly my prayers is answered. <laughs> Because my mind is out of the way. <laughs> you guys still with me? It's important to speak in tongues a lot. I speak a lot in tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. If you cannot, let's pray for you. Let's minister to you. Because there's something that people miss about this tongue thing. They think, did you know that if you really read it in the Bible, I don't have time to go there today. The Bible actually says you already have a tongue. Why would God create a man that cannot speak? That's the language of the new man inside of you. He's not deaf. He's not dumb. He can hear in the spirit and he can speak in the spirit. When I speak in tongues, it's my spirit man speaking. And it's the Holy Spirit combined there and he knows everything that's going on. A friend of mine, I don't know why I'm on this, a friend of mine, in, uh, not a friend, our dean in the Bible school in South Africa that I was in when I left the other traditional Bible school, I don't want to say it, and I went to this more charismatic school because now I'm renewed. He was, he was sitting one morning in the church waiting, for the, the worship team was going up and practicing, it was early morning, he was just sitting there and he was praying in the spirit a little bit and the next moment he saw in the spirit three Lebanese men in a sinking boat swimming and struggling in a storm and they're out of the boat and they're in this water and he thought this is a strange vision and the father said to him pray in the spirit you are praying for someone and he pray in the spirit pray in the spirit and after a while he sees and he just leave it next morning he opened the news he opened the, the, the newspaper Lebanese ship sank in the ocean and on African coast. Three men made it to the shore alive, miraculously. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. We think that this prayer, speaking in tongues, is just, you, you are busy with kingdom stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. Amen? So I'm on a, I'm on a different, I'm, uh, this was, I don't know why, how did I end up here? Somewhere. I'd, then he says, casually, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Here's what I want to say to you this morning. Satan is absolutely defeated by Jesus. How many of you agree with me on that? He's absolutely defeated. But he is seeking who he may devour. And how does he find that? He finds stuff in your heart. If he's, he's seeking for people that he can devour. And the only access that he has is when we have stuff in the heart. Listen, the Bible makes it clear. When Judas, Judas was one of Jesus' disciples. You, you know that he stole the money and stuff like that. And he, he always helped himself out of. He had, a, he had a problem. Say he had a problem. He had a problem with greed. He had a problem with it. And it, is a, it was a hard condition. Say hard condition. That's why the scriptures say. And Satan already put it in the heart of, Joseph, of, of Judas. I'm just using it as an illustration here this morning. All right. Say to the person next to you. It's going to get good. Don't worry. All right. These are real things in life. You agree with me? Yeah. It's real. Yeah. Satan is real. He can do nothing if you are submitted to Jesus. He can do nothing. Zero. Mahala. Yeah. The, the, Greek, uh, the Zulu word for zero is mahala. He, he can do nothing. 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 This suffering that he talk about here is a different kind of suffering. There's the sufferings of Jesus on the cross. And there is the suffering of the attacks of the enemy that is continuously going. And, and we suffer. If, 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 if in the body of Christ one of us is overtaken by the enemy, we suffer as a body with that person. You still with me? But he say he resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist him, knowing this. Amen. Say resist. See, he is looking for who he can devour. And believe me, I come out of real background situations. We have seen some, I've seen some stuff from my life. 
But the, the, the reality is this verse is not a negative verse. This is a positive verse. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Because it's positive in the sense that me and you submit to Jesus. We cast our care on God. And we resist. We stand on what He has already done for us. Yes. Amen. We stand on that. And I, you know what? Sometimes there's stuff that happen in life. It is just circumstances and things like that. But I know when it's Satan. I, I discerned that. I said to Kathy, we went through situations in the past that I know, okay, this is just life circumstances. God's turning this around. But then suddenly something happened one day and I say to her, that's the devil. And it was. The outcome was, it was the devil. So we need discernment. Say discernment. Sure. Amen. Okay, let's go on here. Look at, look at this verse. 1 Peter 1 verse 13. Listen to this. Therefore... I am watched a lot in Peter this week. Therefore, is that the wrong First Peter 1? Oh, that is 5.13. It's supposed to be 1.13. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read it. She, she's going to get it there. He says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Say loins. The lo be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that has been brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How powerful is that? <laughs> gird up the loins of your mind. Yeah. Your loins, you gird it up with a belt. If, if, you, if, you, if, your, if your mind is not girt up, then it means it is loose like a pair of with, like pants who don't have a belt. <laughs> Are you with me? It's, your mind is loose. But if you gird it up with truth, how many of you know it's yeah. the belt of truth? You gird your mind up with truth. It means you begin to focus. Your mind is not all over the place. Say, I'm focusing. I'm then it means you begin to focus and you put your hope fully on the grace of Jesus. Amen. Yes. You put your hope fully. That means hope is an, it's a word that says expectation. Now you have an expectation on the grace of Jesus at the revelation of Jesus. That revelation that he talked about here is not when Jesus returned one day. You put your hope fully on the revelation of Christ in you. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's the revelation. Amen. And I gird my mind up. My mind is not loose. I'm focusing. So when stuff come at me in this life, in this world, my mind is set on Jesus. I resist you. Yes? The natural say it. But that's not who I am. That's not what I have in Christ Jesus. Yes, there's pain. Ah, you're going to pass. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You guys still with me? Yeah. So we gird up our minds. So our hope is also expectation is connected to imagination. How many of you know that when you fear, you imagine stuff? You imagine the worst. You even have pictures. Imagination is a picture in your heart. But when you have hope, you have a healthy imagination. Hallelujah. Yeah. That means your imagination is lined up with the word of God. It's lined up with the grace of Jesus. It's lined up with the kingdom of God. You have a healthy imagination. Amen. You begin to see things from God's perspective. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we place our hope on Him. So uh, uh, here's what I want to say to you this morning. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Right. Reality check. Yes. Man, I actually need to go with you into that verse. And then you can... Emily, can you put up that first John... Uh, four and we greet from verse one. Uh, I'm just going to throw something out there, okay? Some of you are theologians, I don't know. Some of you study the scriptures every day. But I've seen something in this verse that really blow my mind away. Um, first, no, no, first, first John. Yes, yes. Look at this verse. <laughs> This is my explanation. You can go home and have a cup of coffee with your wife and say, that African guy don't know what he's talking about. That's fine. I won't, I won't feel the rejection. <laughs> Here's what I want to say. Listen to this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2. It's coming, I know. <laughs> Verse 2 says, yes, hereby we know 
You know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses, now listen to this, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Say in the flesh. flesh. Alright. The next verse, and every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist whereby you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Verse 4 says, he we, we can, what does verse 4 say? You are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is, in the, uh, that is in you than he is in the world. You know what I believe that verses, that four, three, four verses really say to us? Every human being, even the Muslims, acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh. Yeah. That he was on the earth. Mm-hmm. It's not difficult for people to believe. Right. That verse say nothing about Jesus' earthly walk. That verse say that Jesus has come in this flesh. Are you still with me? The Antichrist, that which is against Christ, fight the reality of you knowing that Christ lives in your flesh. That's why the context, reads the context. Verse 4 say, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Come on. That's the context. I'm just throwing that out there today for you to go and meditate about. So the whole battle, the, the biggest battle out there is that the enemy want to darken your mind that you don't really believe Christ lives in you. That he has arrived with his fullness. That's a mystery. Paul say it's a mystery that needs to be revealed. Yeah. So, okay, you can, you, can, you can actually talk a lot about that verse. Amen? Yeah. You st- that was not part of my sermon, but I just wanted to throw it in. Yeah. Okay, now we come to this verse. The verse that I read right in the beginning. Now we come to this verse where he say in 1 Peter 4, verse 1 to 4. Let's, uh, 1 to 2. This is what he say. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mind. Say same mind. Same. That he who suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Sin have a lot of explanation. There's a lot of different meanings on sin. But the main focus about sin is that you don't believe what you have in Christ. Jesus. That's sin. Adam and Eve was, they fall short. They, they miss the, mar- the, 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 the mark. Why? Because the enemy say to them, no, you will be like God. They were already like God. How many of you agree? That was the deception. So they, they separate themselves from the quality of God's life. That's what sin basically is. Me and you separate ourselves from the quality of God's life. That's basically what sin is. I'm going to do it my way. Uh, I don't really accept the fact that Christ, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit unto the law of Moses and I'm going to try very hard in that, that sin. I don't have time to explain that to you now. <laughs> Amen. We, 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 we can do that on another time. I think I explained that before. So what is he, he say that, that he no longer should, be, should rest his time in the flesh, for the rest of his time in the flesh, for the lust of men or the desires of men, but for the will of God. You know what that verse really means? Arm your mind with the sufferings of Jesus on the cross. That verse talk about the finished work of Jesus. How many of you know that he suffered? So if I arm my mind with the same knowledge, with the same suffering, then it means, listen, how many of you agree with me that, that, that the Romans 6 say that if we die with him, certainly we shall also be raised with him. Is it, is, am I right or am I wrong? So we died with him, so he who suffered in the flesh with him, when, when Jesus were hanging on the cross, you suffer with him yeah. you were in him yes. amen yes. we were all in him when he died yes. we were all in him when he came out of the grave yes. Yes. amen yes. so that verse is referring to the finished work of Jesus Christ so I arm my mind with the reality is that when suffering being thrown at me that the enemy wants to bring me under the sufferings of sin I'm just saying sorry that thing has been dealt with 2,000 years ago. I arm my mind. Amen. The enemy want to throw guilt and condemnation on me. Sorry, I have been made righteous through his sufferings. Yes. Yes. I arm my mind. 
It's a weapon. Say it's a weapon. Your mind is a strong weapon. Your mind can destroy you or your mind. Your mind can work against you as a weapon or your mind can be a weapon working against the forces of darkness. Still with me? Talking about guns. If you have a gun in the United States, then it means you can protect your home and your family. Okay. Isn't that right, South Africa? We had guns. I slept. We, we had crime all the time. I had the gun under the bed, the gun under the pillow, praying that the thing don't go off while I'm sleeping. <laughs> safety, was, <laughs> safety was on, but <laughs> anything can happen in my dreams, I mean. <laughs> but, but we had guns. We had gunshots in the night, I mean, where we were living. Reality check is, I had guns to protect myself. I love hunting too, but I, I had guns to protect. So you, you arm your mind with the finished work of Jesus Christ because this is your house. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. This is your house. Yeah. And you protect this thing. Yeah. Still with me? Yeah. You protect it against guilt and condemnation and sickness and all kinds of things that the enemy tried to lay on you. You protect this. You arm your mind knowing in your mind no the work is done sorry you may attack me you're a loser you already lose because 2000 years ago jesus dealt with that thing i'm not submitting to that you still with me let's stand sermon is done <laughs>